I lived in a city in central Ohio that has a big college that I live near. I actually attended a different college than the one I mentioned and made the 20 minute drive from the city to that college. I also worked nights as a pizza delivery man in the city and the surrounding suburbs. One night, I had an order in the town where my college is located, which is a smaller suburban city northwest of my home city. Now, this call occurred during what my co-workers and I referred to as the dead hour, which is just before the shop closed at one in the morning. I begrudgingly took the pizza, got in the car, and plugged the address into the GPS. I noticed that the house was located off of a back road in what looked like a sparsely populated area. Not thinking much of this, I drove up Route 315 to I-270 East and exited. After passing through downtown, the cemetery, and the college, I drove through some sub-developments and then on the smaller road where the house was located. The GPS notified me that I had arrived at my destination, but to my surprise the house was boarded up. I noticed that there was a small shed in the back of the house that had a small window. There was a flickering light in the window. At this point almost every red flag had gone off in my head, but I knew my hard ass boss would be pissed if I wimped out on this delivery. So I proceeded towards the shed. As I got closer to the shed, I heard a rustling in the bushes next to the driveway. Then I heard a man whisper, Here they come, Billy. 45, 45. At that point, a man jumped out of the bushes and two other men jumped out of the shed. They were carrying knives and were wearing these long robes and white masks. I made it back to the car just in time, but one of the assailants managed to slip my arm. As I escaped, I could see the assailant standing in the middle of the road looking pissed. I probably drove 90 miles per hour on the way back. When I got to the shop, everyone looked shocked. After explaining everything to them, we contacted the police and they dispatched a few officers to the house. When they got there, the assailants were gone. They found some strange drug paraphernalia in the shed and some ropes and various other strange equipment. What they were to be used for, I have no idea. This happened when I was about 14. I had just started babysitting for this family in my neighborhood. They had two kids, a boy who was 10 at the time and a girl who at the time was 8. They were great kids to babysit. They got along with each other without fighting and always did what I asked of them without complaining. Before I launch into what happened, I'm going to give you all some background information about this family's house so you can understand why I was so freaked out. The house is situated pretty far back in my neighborhood on this little side street off of the main road that runs the neighborhood. The house is in a cul-de-sac, so there's not a lot of traffic on this road at all. Usually, the only people that ever come into the cul-de-sac are the mailman and people who lived in the other three houses that were in the cul-de-sac. The street itself was not very long at all, so there were only three houses on each side of the street that weren't in the cul-de-sac. Essentially, despite being in a large neighborhood, the street that this house was situated on was very quiet, and if you didn't live in the neighborhood, you might not know that this street existed. It was a fall Friday night, I'm pretty sure it was late November right after Thanksgiving, and I had arrived at the house around 6pm. The kids were already sitting down eating dinner when I got there and the parents told me that they expected to be home around midnight or so. The parents also made a joke about how the kids had the whole street to themselves since the other families that lived there were out of town for Thanksgiving. The parents left, the kids finished eating, and we went outside to play in the cul-de-sac. I remember locking the front door and taking the house key outside with me. The kids rode around on their scooters for about an hour. For some reason, I just felt really on edge while the kids were playing outside. I chalked this feeling up to knowing that we were alone on the street since everyone else was out of town. After the kids finished playing outside, we went inside to play Wii in the basement. I remember locking the front door once we were back inside and putting the key on the kitchen counter. I then checked the front door before I went downstairs to the basement. I was super vigilant about checking the doors because I had watched so many scary movies where the babysitter forgets to lock the door and then some crazy murderer gets into the house, blah blah blah. As the kids are playing in the basement, 
I get that unsettling feeling again. I didn't feel like we were being watched. It was more like when you know that something is going to pop out in a scary movie and you're just anticipating it on the edge of your seat, with tension at its highest. The feeling sticks with me the entire time that we're in the basement, but again, I chalk it up to the knowing that the entire street is empty. The clock strikes 10 and it's time for the kids to head to bed. We go to the top floor of the house where the kids' bedrooms are. The house is set up so that when you open the front door of the house and come inside, you're standing in the foyer with the steps to go to the top floor directly in front of you. If you're standing in the foyer, you can see all the way up the stairs into the bathroom and on the top floor. So the kids are in the bathroom brushing their teeth and we all hear a car pull into their driveway. I figured that it's their parents coming home super early and I expect to hear the garage door start opening, but that sound never comes. I walk into the girl's bedroom and look out her front window. There's a car running in the driveway, and there's a man in the car, but the headlights are turned off despite it being 10pm and it's pitch black dark outside. I figured it was someone who just got lost in our neighborhood and was just using the driveway to stop and get their bearings before heading back out on the road. I leave the girl's bedroom and head back to the bathroom where the kids are. Suddenly, I hear a knock on the front door. I turn around and there's a man standing at their door holding a pizza box. There are two long windows on either side of their front door, so I have a clear view of this guy, and I know that he has a clear view of us. I immediately get that eerie feeling that I had been feeling all night. I asked both of the kids if they ordered a pizza for some reason, and they both said no. These kids were always very honest and wouldn't lie about something like that, or even order a pizza without asking me so I knew they were being truthful. Normally I would have gone downstairs to see what this guy wanted. Maybe he had the wrong house and I could point him in the right direction, but that little voice in my head was screaming, don't go downstairs, do not open that door. The guy also looked like he didn't work for any pizza company. Normally they would be wearing a uniform or a hat with the company's logo on it, or something. This guy just seemed off. He looked like he was in his late 30s, maybe early 40s, and looked super disheveled. His shirt was really wrinkled. His pants were filthy and ripped, and he had this ratty black baseball cap that was pulled down super far so that his eyes were covered. He was also grinning really aggressively, like I thought this guy's teeth would just shatter because of how hard he was pressing them together. At this point, the kids notice him and start asking why he's here. Should we open the door, etc., etc.? I tell them no, and ask that they just go to their rooms and lie down. The boy goes to his room, and I walk the girl into her room and look out the window at the car again. I notice that the car doesn't have one of those pizza delivery car signs on the top, which all of the pizza companies in my town require delivery drivers to have. So now I feel really confident in my initial intuition that this guy isn't a legit pizza delivery guy. The girl gets in bed and I come back out of her room and sit down at the top of the stairs so that I can keep an eye on this guy. I tried to stay really calm so as not to upset the kids even though I was flipping out on the inside. He's still standing at the door holding the pizza box in one hand and he's still grinning that teeth shattering grin. His mouth was almost too big for his face I thought. Even though I can't see his eyes because of the hat I know that he's dead ass staring at me. Then, without breaking eye contact, he starts jiggling the door handle pretty aggressively while still grinning. I silently thank God that I was so psychotic about making sure the front door was locked. He stopped jiggling the handle and resumes staring at me. If I was in the situation now, I probably would have called the police immediately, but being only 14 and fairly new to babysitting, I was paralyzed with fear. I felt like if I took my eyes off of him for a second, when I look back, he would be standing at the base of the stairs. After about another five minutes of the stare down, he literally starts walking backwards off of the porch without breaking eye contact. Legit this dude is walking backwards towards his car while still staring at me. I go into the parents' bedroom, which also has a view of the driveway kneel down in front of the window and peek out. I'm expecting to see this guy getting into his car. Nope. The guy is nowhere in sight, 
but the car is still there. So I return to my perch at the top of the stairs, half expecting to see him at the door again, or worse, standing at the bottom of the stairs. But he was nowhere to be seen. After about 20 minutes, I hear a car starting. I run back to the parents' room, kneel in front of the window again, and notice that the car in the driveway has started, and the guy is sitting in the driver's seat, still fucking grinning. He also doesn't turn the headlights on. He shifts into reverse and begins slowly backing out of the driveway, grinning the entire time. Right before he drives off, he turns his head, and I swear to God, makes direct eye contact with me again. And again, I can't see his eyes because of the hat, but I know that he was looking directly at me. This is really disturbing to me since he didn't really know where I was in the house. The parents' bedroom is in the farthest window to the right if you're looking at the house from outside. The lights in the parents' bedroom are off, and I'm kneeling down. So really, the only part of me that might potentially be visible is the top of my head, my eyes, and my nose. But it's also pitch black outside. He doesn't have his headlights on, and it's pitch black in the parents' bedroom, so I doubt that I was really visible. He also didn't spend time scanning the windows. His head literally just snapped to where I was. It was like he could sense that I was looking at him. After I had time to calm down and collect myself, I started replaying what had just happened and came to the following conclusions. This guy was not a pizza delivery guy. He had no uniform, looked and acted like he was possessed or something, and his car was unmarked. Those 20 minutes or so that elapsed between when he walked backwards off of the porch to when he got into the car were probably spent walking around the house and checking all of the doors, trying to gain entry. He had malicious intent. Maybe he wanted to rob the house. Maybe he wanted to do something more sinister to me or the kids. Either way, this guy was bad news, and I'm glad I trusted the voice in my head. I think he probably found some pizza box and tried to pose as a pizza delivery guy to get me to open the door for him so that he could strike. There are still some parts of the story that are confusing me. If he really wanted to get inside the house, why didn't he find a rock, a brick, or something else to throw through the window? I mean, I'm very glad that he didn't, but I just thought it was a bit odd that he checked the doorknobs and then gave up after he discovered that they were all locked. Maybe he felt like doing something that made a lot of noise that would alert me, and so he could try to sneak in in a more subtle way to catch me off guard. Why did he walk backwards off the porch? Was it just to preserve eye contact and thus intimidate me? Or was this dude just insane? Why did I feel so unsettled early on in the evening before this guy even showed up? Was he watching the house and waiting for the kids to go to bed and for me to be off guard before trying to get into the house? How did he know where to look when he was backing out of the driveway? Why was he grinning the entire time? Did he know that our house was the only house on the street that was inhabited at that time? Why did he pick that house, especially given the fact that it's on a very quiet and secluded street and you have to drive pretty far to the back of the neighborhood to even reach the street? He could have picked the 50 or other so houses that you have to pass to even get to that house. The town where I live is upper middle class and has a super low crime rate and drugs aren't really an issue. We're also surrounded by other similar upper middle class areas so I'm doubtful that this person was on drugs or some crazy vagrant. Of course, I could be wrong. Maybe this dude was just jacked up on drugs. Maybe he was just a vagrant dude. Maybe he really was just a lost pizza delivery man with some unsettling personal quirks. But I'm really doubtful. So I'm a pizza delivery girl. Easy enough. I was at work around 9.30pm when this guy calls. Very whispery, breathing voice. I do my usual, thank you for calling Pizza Hut. This is Karen. How are you doing tonight? After the usual exchange, I find out he is ordering for delivery. He is a new customer so I had to put in all of his information, nothing weird. He tells me he has a coupon for a pizza and asks if I can give him the discount. I told him, let me grab my manager and we'll take care of that for you. He asked for me specifically to take care of him. After I came back from dealing with my boss, 
I told him that we discounted him for his coupon. He thanked me. Here's where it gets weird. He stopped me mid-sentence and told me that I have a very nice sounding tone of voice and that he loved hearing me talk and you should be a disc jockey. I was a little weirded out, but I tried to stay professional. I told him that it was very sweet and I would consider it. He said, I'd listen to your radio station. Thank you for taking my order tonight. I'll stop by your store and see you sometime soon, Karen. I wish I would say it was over, but that isn't true. Note that this man lives in an apartment complex. What I didn't realize is I had taken the complex's address, but not his apartment number. Not five minutes later, the man calls back and my co-worker Belay answers the phone. I had learned after the fact that he had asked for me by name. I pick up the phone and did my greeting and he reminded me I forgot to ask for his apartment number. Nothing weird yet. Again, I thanked him and changed the information. Before I could hang up, this was our conversation. Karen. Yes sir, how can I help you? <laughs> Are you doing alright? Yes sir, I'm great. Good. I'm going to hang up now. See you soon. Belay heard the whole story and told my boss to have my male co-worker take it. This is what Bob came back with. First thing he said to me is asking where you were. Okay, so I got there, right? And I knock on the door. He asked in this weird, seductive voice, Come in. But I was not about to go in this guy's house, so I knock again. He opened the door with a big smile on his face, but saw it was me, and it just dropped. I greeted him, and he said, Oh, where's Karen? I told him you were here, at the store, and he just looked upset. After I took his money and gave him his food, he asked how you were. I told him you were doing alright, and he just said, Good. Karen is a sweet girl. Tell her. I'll see her soon. The fact that he had asked the driver to come in and that he was expecting me creeps me out. Maybe he's just lonely and wants someone to talk to. But still, add one more creep to my list. For my first job, I worked as a delivery driver and dishwasher at a mom and pop's pizza shop. The shop is within walking distance of my apartment, which I just got alone. The shop is owned by a foreign man and his two nephews and another friend of theirs. I was the only female in the entire building. At first, the owner asked me to change into my work shirt the first day, in the walk-in freezer. I declined and put it on in the bathroom. He supervised me delivering pizzas and put his arm around my chair and told me to join him and the workers after work for drinks. I politely declined. I wasn't even old enough to drink. He asked if I had a boyfriend, which I did at the time, and I told him yes, he just lived in another state. He then offered his worker to sleep on my couch because he didn't have a place to stay, without consulting me. I obviously protested and declined. He also told me that he knew my boyfriend's name, which he did, which I never told him. As time went on, things got weirder. The owner would take me out back where there were no cameras and scold me for not pouring bleach into the dishes I was washing. I told him that you can't stick your hands in the bleach, but he didn't care. He would take me out back after my shift and compliment my eyeglasses and tell me how beautiful I was. I would say thanks, back away, and drive home every time. He came up behind me as I was washing dishes and blew on the back of my neck, and then proceeded to tell me that, since I live alone, didn't inform him of this, that I should be careful. He then stated that he knew the exact layout of the apartment because his friend lives there. I told him I had a male roommate. I didn't, and he chuckles and told me I did not, and that he was going to break into my apartment. I was stunned and had four deliveries waiting for me to drop them off. On the way out the door, his nephew muttered something about me being a girl. I threw the pizza bags into the car and promptly pulled over, had a panic attack and dropped all five pizzas and whatever else I was delivering at the first house and didn't give a shit. I went home to my apartment 
called my mom and sat in the kitchen with a hammer for safety. Someone was knocking on my front door, but I didn't look to see who. I already had a feeling. Then, the pizza shop called me repeatedly. I left my eyeglasses in the shop and had their pizza bags. My dad went into the store, took the pizza bags back and threatened the owner, saying he has no problem going back to jail. My dad brought back my glasses. Months later, I ran into the nephew at my college campus and he proceeded to make unending, uncomfortable eye contact until we passed each other. After the incidents, I got a huge 100 pound American bulldog that kept me safe until the day she died. The pizza shop is still open for business and I'm still living in my apartment. Needless to say, I don't order pizza from that shop anymore. I attend a college that is located in one of the poorest cities in Northern California. The campus is relatively safe since the school employs its own department of public safety, but after the sun sets it's usually a good call to remain indoors because that's when the townies come out and they tend to wander into campus. About two years ago I was living in an apartment complex in the main part of campus and I still didn't have a car yet. It was the end of the fall semester and I was the last person in my apartment of three girls to finish taking finals, so I was home alone since my roommates had already gone home for winter break. I got back from taking my last exam and followed my usual routine of dejectedly collapsing into bed to cry and sleep off the effects of pulling an all-nighter. When I finally woke up, it was already past 10pm and I was starving. Unfortunately, the student grocery store and cafeteria were closed for the day and I had nothing in the apartment to eat and no car to get food elsewhere. I was woefully poking around the fridge in the hopes that I would find something substantial to tide me over until morning when I noticed a Domino's coupon that someone had stuck to the freezer. My stomach's pathetic cries for sustenance had been answered. I quickly decided that there was no shame in ordering a whole pizza plus Cinestics for myself because one, I was ravenous and two, the completion of finals demanded some sort of celebration and three, if anyone happened to ask I was going to lie and say I was sharing it with a friend or something along those lines. Anyway, I eagerly ordered up my feast for one and provided the cashier with my address, apartment and cell number. I typically never give out my number to anyone but I had ordered delivery from Domino's in the past and I knew that they needed my number to call me once more when they were outside because the drivers always got lost navigating through campus. About 20 minutes later, I got the call. My food was here. For reference, it's now close to midnight and the campus was pretty much dead since most students had gone home. The driver told me that he had parked in front of a dorm building that was right across the street from my apartment. I hustled out of my apartment and was going down the stairs when I spotted the delivery guy waiting outside of his car with my pizza. At this point, my sense of caution kicked in and I slowed my pace as my brain took in the fact that there were no other students out, the lighting was bad, and I was essentially walking up to a stranger in his car that still had his engine running. As I neared the bottom of the steps, I silently hoped that he would cross the street and approach me so that I wouldn't have to get near the car. Of course, that didn't happen. I made my way across the street and was finally able to get a good look at him. He was a relatively short Hispanic guy, maybe 5'7 to 5'9, in his early 20s, and my nerves were getting bombarded by the creeper vibes he was giving off. I can only compare it to the vibe that you get when you're out clubbing and you suddenly spot the guy lurking in the crowd sporting the slicked back ponytail, sunglasses, oversized shirt and sagged pants combo who just so happens to be headed in your direction. I did my best to appear calm and keep the mood light and friendly. He made some comments about how late it was and how no one was around, but I just signed the receipt as quickly as possible, gave him my thanks and an awkward smile, and hightailed it out of there as soon as he handed me my food. I could feel him watching me as I climbed the stairs back to my place. Once I got back into my apartment, I locked and chained up the door and sat down on the living room couch to calm myself. After a few moments, I shrugged off the situation and reasoned that it was just my paranoia and overactive imagination acting up again. I had just turned on the television and was about to take my first bite of pizza 
when I got a text from an unknown number. It read, You're hella sexy. I connected the dots and matched the text number to the call I had received earlier from the pizza delivery guy. My initial reaction of course was shock since nothing like this has ever happened to me before, but that eventually melted away into laughter and disbelief when I considered my appearance at the time. Like I had mentioned earlier, I had just woken up from my nap after taking my last final. I was wearing a pair of raggedy sweatpants and loose sweatshirt, and my hair was nappy and tied into a messy ponytail. My face was probably greasier than the pizza I was eating, and to top it off I had my glasses on. Definitely not a pretty picture, much less anything that could even come close to resembling hella sexy. The next morning I got a call from my boyfriend John, and I casually told him about the pizza delivery driver, who casually signed his name in the text as Phildo, and the events that had transpired the previous evening. After sheepishly trying to defend my actions on the basis of poor judgment caused by extreme hunger and promising never to do that type of thing again, John convinced me that I should report it to the campus police as a precautionary measure. I gave them a call, and an officer stopped by my apartment a few hours later. I relayed my story, he took some pictures of the text message, and he wrote down Fildo's phone number. The officer then told me that he would contact the Domino's if I wanted him to, but that it would most likely result in Fildo's termination. I was still relatively unfazed by the whole situation, and I told the officer I just wanted to make sure that this creep never did this to any other girls on campus, but at the same time, I didn't want him to lose his job. The officer then started asking me questions about how I felt after my encounter. Questions along the lines of, Do you feel threatened by Fildo? Do you feel safe in your apartment with the knowledge that Fildo has both your phone number and your exact address? If I wasn't scared before, I definitely was now and during the course of my questioning, I had broken out in a cold sweat and my traitorous imagination began conjuring up all sorts of dastardly situations that ended in my untimely demise. Obviously, I ended up giving the officer the go-ahead to pursue my case and contact the Dominoes. About a month later, while I was at home celebrating the holidays, I got a call from my boyfriend. I had left him the keys to my apartment so that he could store his bike there and crash in my room while I was away. He told me that he had stopped by my place, but that he couldn't get in because the keys weren't working. He also said that it looked like someone had broken in because there was some glass on the floor and a wooden board across my living room window. I was pretty upset because this was my first time hearing about it, so I called the school the next day to figure out what the hell had happened. Housing transferred my call to the public safety department, and the officer I spoke with was only able to tell me that, according to their records, a maintenance worker had called them two days after I had headed home to report my broken window. Public safety had responded by boarding up the window and changing the lock when they noticed it had been tampered with. I convinced the officer to let my boyfriend into the apartment so he could go check and see if anything was stolen, and thankfully, nothing was. My gut tells me that it was Fildo who did it. It was Fildo who tried to pick my lock and then broke my window. It scares me even more now when I consider the fact that nothing had been stolen. My flat screen TV was right by the window that had been broken, and my boyfriend's fancy road bike was sitting right there in the living room. Why didn't he steal anything? Does that mean his intentions were to break in and get his revenge on me, the girl that had cost him his job? Would this still have happened if I had not given the officer permission to pursue the case? I try not to spend too much time speculating about what Fildo's true intentions were, but when I do, it still makes my heart race when I think about what could have happened if I'd still been in my apartment at the time. This was about six months ago in the summer, southern hemisphere here. I tend to order a fair bit of pizza since hunger is a thing and pizza is pretty much my only option for delivery since I don't drive. Now, I'm the kind of girl who doesn't wear pants if I don't have to. Oh, the weather's about 25 degrees, no pants for me. I have one pair of shorts that I love to wear, but only around the house, so obviously I put those on as I'm expecting a pizza delivery and can't exactly open the door pantless. I open the door, 
accept the pizza and begin eating my dinner by the television. Not too long into my meal, I get a message on my phone. I've deleted the messages, of course, but in the first message, the sender calls me by name, which is strange as I prefer my nickname and asks if I'm home alone often with a winky face. Okay, way creepy. Who is this person? Between me asking who on earth they are and how they got my number, probably a mistake on my part, they begin to describe exactly what I was wearing, and I get a horrible, sinking feeling. This person has my number, my name, and how I'm dressed. I realize that the only way they could know this is if they were the guy who delivered my pizza, as I had to use my name and number to order. And if that's the case, this person knows where I live too. I put the number into Google and check the first few results. They're a local, and I've actually seen this person around on one of the buy, swap, sell pages on Facebook. Realizing they were in my town was the worst part, and they were literally in a good position to stalk, harass, or continue to be creepy as hell. I ended up drawing all the blinds, crawling into bed and pretty much making myself into a blanket burrito, staying as still as I could for a few hours. I was genuinely scared out of my wits. Thankfully, I have yet to hear from this person again after threatening police action. So I work at a pizza place usually inside as my insurance does not cover claims when driving for business, but occasionally I will cover a delivery shift for one of the drivers because the money is good. Our delivery area includes a few new development, upper middle class cookie cutter neighborhoods, an older 1940s era village, two apartment complexes, some trailer parks, and a bunch of rural areas. Not rural to the point of seeing hundreds of stars at night, but enough that you couldn't hear your neighbors yell. So about a week ago I was covering a delivery shift. I come back to the shop feeling pretty good. I'm averaging $5 a delivery and they have all been pretty close and check to see if I have any more deliveries. I have one to an address I have never seen before. We have mostly semi-regulars get deliveries, so an address that doesn't seem the least bit familiar is odd. It's out on one of the more rural roads. I asked the kid who took the order what was up because there were special instructions on the ticket. He says, They said go around back because the front door, I guess, isn't operational? I'm like, okay... That's not that uncommon. People often want you to go around back. Either they're painting the door, the house shifted and it's a bitch to open, or they're just hanging out back. So as I'm driving out to the house, I get an odd feeling, and I don't really like the idea of going to the back of some house in the sticks. It would all be too easy for some thugs to order a pizza to an abandoned house, there are quite a few in the more rural areas, then jump the delivery guy. I figured I'll scope the place out when I get there, and if it seems sketchy, just call them and make up some bull about how it's against company policy to go around back of houses to prevent robberies. As I'm driving to the house, I realize it's towards the end of this road that gets less populated the further down you go. Great. I'm pretty near the address and driving slow. I see this house abandoned looking and set up from the roads with no address and in a bunch of trees. I think... That house better not be it. So I drive past and check the next house's address, and lo and behold, that abandoned looking one was the right house. Shit. At this point I'm not super worried though because out in the boonies the standards of upkeep on your house are pretty low, so a house in disrepair isn't unusual. So I double back to this house and pull into the driveway. At this point I'm getting bad vibes, it just doesn't feel right. So I park my car at the very end of the driveway with the rear of the car on the shoulder so anyone passing can clearly see it. At this point I call back to the shop and tell them I'm at this sketchy house and if I don't call back in 4 or 5 minutes, call me and if I don't answer, call the cops. While I am on the phone I take a chance to take a good look at the house. It looks extremely abandoned and not just in disrepair. The driveway is crumbling. Bits are gravel and there are weeds growing out of it. There is no mailbox, no trash cans, no car, no lawnmowers, no landscaping, no kids toys, absolutely nothing in the yard. 
The yard has been mowed in what looks like years. The house is total crap. The roof is all but falling apart. The siding is falling apart. The back deck, which comes around the side, is falling apart. And the only part of the house that looks even a little bit decent is the allegedly non-functioning front door. The windows are all shut. It's 95 degrees and humid and this place does not have AC. They all have the blinds or curtains shut, the few that aren't actually boarded up. I don't even see any wires running to this house. It's not dark but it's dusk and there isn't a sign of any lights on in the house. At this point I'm starting to get pretty nervous. I am a 5'10 male, 180 pounds, not in any great shape, but I did take karate for 10 years so I'm not helpless, but I do try to avoid any sort of confrontation as I can as I'm mostly a pacifist. I'm not too concerned about getting robbed, no skin off my teeth that's not my money. I mean, I would rather not get robbed, but I'm mostly worried about getting jumped or killed. It's a fairly safe area, but recently there have been some more rather unsavory people moving in from the city. A big spike in home invasions and robberies, but more worrying a few stabbings and assaults. So it's time to either nut up or shut up. So I'm not about to go charging in there like a fool, so I get out my phone and call the number they gave when ordering. While I'm doing that, I'm also getting the pizza out and make sure to leave my door open. A running car half in the road at an abandoned house with the door open looks suspicious, right? I figured if shit does go down, it might look out of place enough to make someone stop. Not that there really is any traffic this far down the road. I'm starting to walk up to the house while the phone rings. It rings twice, and then an automated message comes on. It says something along the lines that this number is associated with an internet texting app the free ones you download and let you send free texts from a different phone number over a data connection. I think it was Haywire. We have had issues with people using numbers from those services for pranks in the past. This is a huge red flag. My heart is now pounding in my throat and my whole body is telling me to bail. I don't want to get a reputation of being a flaky bitch as a driver and lose any future delivery shifts and that is why I have not bailed yet. So I'm just standing there holding a pizza looking at this house but not wanting to venture around to the back of it. I'm hoping that the resident will look out the window and come out by the road to get their food. I'm looking at the front windows checking for some signs of life. I see a blind go up on the one window next to the front door and a really creepy looking guy with a hat pulled low and big sunglasses on is looking out. Remember, he is in a completely dark house surrounded by trees at dusk there is no reason for him to be wearing sunglasses. I also see what appears to be a big guy standing right behind him in the room. This could have been anything though. When he sees me looking, he mouths something and he darts away, presumably towards the allegedly broken front door. At this point, I got the fuck out of there. I had stayed pretty close to my car, so it was only a few steps away, so I jumped into the driver's seat and throw the pizza into my passenger seat something I would never really do since I'm really anal about keeping my car clean. I slam into reverse before I get the clutch all the way in so I grind my gears a little, again something I never do. Without looking I simultaneously slam and lock my door and floor it backwards onto the main road, slipping my clutch horribly but at this point I don't care, I don't want to fuck around and risk a stall. I didn't even check for cross traffic, really stupid on my part. I start to drive away and look back at the house. The screen door on the outside of the front door is now open, but the front is still shut. The guy isn't out in the yard yelling, wait, come back, or anything. He's just gone. So I pull over a little ways up the road to call back to shop and tell them I'm all good and I'll elaborate when I get back. The people never called back to inquire about their food. People usually call if their pizza is 15 minutes late and these people never got it so it's really strange they didn't call, pretty much confirming they were up to no good. After telling my coworkers about it, we conclude it was definitely a robbery at the very least, so we put the address and phone number on our no deliveries list and ate their pizza. Now, I doubt I would have actually gotten murdered or anything, robbed with maybe a gun pulled or a little roughing up, yes, but it was still very unnerving 
that I easily could have gotten into some serious trouble by just doing my job, especially if the idiots picked a slightly less abandoned house to set up at. So a few weeks ago I got a new job as a pizza delivery guy. Pretty cool, $8 an hour. So I'm told to go deliver a pizza to some apartment complex, nothing out of the ordinary. Upon knocking on the door a pretty cute girl opens up and smiles. Suddenly this delivery is turning out pretty sweet. I tell her the price and she says yeah I got the money in my room and asks me to come in to wait. Now in any other circumstance I'd say no because that's the safe and smart thing to do. But hell, this girl was cute. Plus, what could she do that would hurt me? Well, she returns from her room with the money, smiling at me, and then she drops the change and slowly bends down to pick it up. She's flaunting her rack in a tank top, and when she comes back up, she's smiling. She gives me the cash, and this is how the conversation went after. You're cute. Thanks, you too, I say. Can I have your number? I barely know you. <laughs> Why don't you hang for a bit and we could talk? Uh, alright, but only for like 10 minutes. Well, she led me back to her room and we were going to share the pizza, but as soon as we get back there, she has all this BDSM stuff. Handcuffs, choker chains, dirty panties, whips, etc. lying around. I kind of froze as soon as I took it all in. And then I said something like, oh, never mind, gotta go, and got the fuck out of there. I guess the lesson I learned is that even if someone looks like they're harmless and not creepy, there's still the small chance that they are. Never trust a stranger, no matter how good they may appear. Back around when I was 10, it was not uncommon for me and my siblings to dig around outside. On this particular day, I was tired out from the day before and decided to stay inside. I would occasionally go look outside to make sure everyone was okay and doing well. I was a paranoid small child due to some former trauma I had experienced as a smaller child. Well, after about my third glance outside, my cousin and brother were standing at the end of the gravel drive talking to some pizza man. I turned to my mother and asked if we had ordered pizza, maybe as a surprise. My mom turned to the door and bolted outside yelling. The sounds of tires screeching could be heard. My mom came back inside with my brother, cousin, and sister. After asking what had happened, my brother and cousin went on to explain that the pizza boy they explained to be around his late 20s had asked the boys if they wanted some free pizza. Of course, being small kids, they were readily willing to accept such an offer. He told them the pizzas were in the back, and if they wanted them, they would have to get in. That is luckily when my mom ran towards the car, yelling random obscenities. And thankfully, whoever he was, sped off. Two weeks ago, I was home alone and the doorbell rang. I asked who it was and the guy said, Oh, it's pizza delivery. I didn't order a pizza and when I looked at the people, he was indeed carrying a pizza box. I told him I didn't order any pizza and he left, looked out my window and I see him cross the street to my neighbor's house. Didn't think anything of it since I thought maybe they were the ones who ordered the pizza. So I went back to doing what I was doing which was playing video games. Turns out, the guy robbed my neighbors because they weren't home. Pretty scary stuff. I probably could have stopped it if I called the police. And to think of it, he was carrying a little Caesars box, which is pickup only. As a third year university student, I like to think that pizza, gyros, and hamburgers are important staples of my cost effective and not really nutritious nutritional needs. Needless to say, it wasn't long before I became besties with the guys running the local pizza parlor three blocks from my house. The guys were super cool. I met them for the first time when my best friend Sharon, or Cher, and I went in to buy a pizza for our movie night. 
I wasn't too jazzed on the movie night because my lesbianist roommate Sam insisted on joining in. Now I'm not homophobic, Cher is the biggest lesbian out there, she thinks I have a very nice butt. I was Sam-phobic though. She decided pretty early on that I was hiding my true lesbian nature and had been trying to get me to accept myself for what she believed me to be for like three months. This meant that movie nights with Sam mostly consisted of the one where Cuba Gooding Jr. goes on a gay cruise, the one with the chick working in a flower shop, and the one where Nikki from Orange is the New Black is a high school cheerleader rooting for her own team. So I wasn't too stoked on the movie night. These mostly ended up in deep conversations about the importance of revealing your true sexuality, and neither was Cher because Sam had a way of making things really fucking awkward. Sam would later go on to tell Cher's girlfriend of five years that Cher was cheating on her in an attempt to break them up so that she could later help Cher pick up the pieces. Cher's kind of a total babe. I told these pizza dudes about my roommate and her crazy movie night antics, and they tried to help us out by inviting Cher and I to come back at midnight to watch a horror movie on their projector that they had set up in the dining area. I'm pretty big on horror movies, so to me it sounded like an awesome idea. Cher thought the opposite, and that it sounded like a plot to kidnap and murder us. We were going. Over the next couple of months, I became really tight with the guys, and I would come over every Friday night for scary movie night and discounted pizza. The dudes were cool, and a good way to get time away from Sam, who had taken to tracking my movements like Dog the Bounty Hunter. The guys were pretty successful with their pizza business, and pretty soon they had to hire on more drivers, which is when I met Bill. Bill is pretty much your stereotypical old guy who failed at life. He was in his 40s, but he looked like he was pushing 60. He was constantly high and never showed up to work on time, but always had a really measly and long-winded excuse full of anecdotes of why his life as a pizza delivery guy was so hard. Customers hated him too. When they opened their front door, he would push his way into the house and put their pizza on the kitchen counter table, something he thought would get him a bigger tip. He wouldn't leave their front door until they gave him what he felt like was a big enough tip. If they didn't have money, then he'd tell them that they could tip him in pot. If they didn't have that, then he'd start to yell at them for being cheap assholes. One night I was studying and had to order instead of going out. Normally the guys only sent the cool delivery guys to my place, but that night the rotation hit Bill. He stood in my doorway chatting me up for a long time and told me the guys called him Big Bill for a reason, so obviously Bill needed to get fired like yesterday. The guys do what they have to do and give him notice. I come into the shop on Bill's last working night and talk to my buddy Pete about the firing. Apparently Bill was taking it really well and was just about to finish his last delivery of the night. I hung around to talk to Pete about his troubles with his crazy girlfriend, actually a pretty nice lady. Bill comes in while we're talking and tries to join in the conversation. I was standing at the counter with Pete behind and Bill at my side. Bill starts offering me rides home. I decline because, hey, dude gives me the skeevies. He kept insisting that it was on his way, but I just kept telling him that it was only a 15 minute walk and that I'd be fine. He started to get pouty and then said that I didn't want to get into his car with him because I thought he was creepy. He hit the nail on the head. But since this is Canada and we're polite to a fault, I just laughed it off and insisted that I'd just really rather not. Bill kept pouting and then went outside to have a smoke in his car. On the way out, he grabbed my ass. This sort of abuse isn't uncommon for my bum, but it still pisses me off to no end when it happens. As soon as Bill was out the door and halfway to his car, I told Pete about the ass grab. Pete was a total dude about it and told me that it was a good ass and that he probably would have done the same if he had the balls. I was pissed as a wet cat and was getting late so I started to trudge back home. At the cross light a great piece of junk that I recognized as Bill's car drove up to me. Bill rolled down his window and asked if I was sure that I didn't want to ride. Even after his charming ass grabbing I was still pretty keen on not getting in the car with him. Who would have thought eh? So once again I said, no thanks dude, and he pulled a right, presumably to loop back into the back parking lot of the pizza shop. He shot me a smile and a creepy little wave. I hated that dude. I kept on walking until I reached the next crosswalk. 
When I was halfway across, a grey little shit beater drove up behind me and blasted on the horn. The car drove on past me so I figured it was just Bill being an aggressive dick like usual. I walked down the main street keeping my eye out for him until I reached the gate leading from the street to the backyard of my house. I'm usually pretty nervous entering the backyard because it's as dark as the bottom of the ocean in that bitch so I grabbed my keys between my fingers for a makeshift pair of brass knuckles just in case. All was good in the backyard but when I turned the corner to reach the front of the house I saw a grey shitty shit beater parked on the curb. One thought went through my head. Fuck. So I'm not super rational and even though I was standing right at the entrance to my landlord's basement suite, I instead bolted an extra 20 feet to my front door. I felt like I was going a million miles per hour and that he was going at like 0.3 Michael Myers paces per minute. Michael Myers is one slowly but surely motherfucker. I reached the door and fumbled my keys when I heard his car door shut. I dropped my keys on the fucking ground. I whipped down to pick them up and I heard him whistle. I jammed the keys into my door, turned and slammed that shit behind me as fast as I could and turned the lock. Suddenly everything got really quiet. I didn't turn on any of the lights, I just went to the front window and watched. I couldn't make Bill out, but I could see that he was in his car from the lit end of his cigarette. I called for Sam but he wasn't home, so instead I called Pete on the phone. Our conversations basically went like this, pardon my excessive use of the French language. Generic Italian mob boss Pizza Pete here. What can I... Fuck, fuck shit Pete. What the fuck? Fucking Bill follow me home man, fuck. Whoa, what? Fucking creepy ass ass grabbing fucking Bill is outside my fucking house. Dude, he's supposed to be on the other side of town. I asked him to do a delivery at 10 mile like 20 minutes ago. Well, he's fucking here. He's probably just pulling this shit because he thinks you're pretty and it's his last shift. Are you sure it's him? It's not like my town has a shortage of gray beater cars, but I think I had seen this one enough times in one night to make a positive ID. Yeah, dude, it's like definitely him. Okay, I can be over there in like 15 minutes. Okay, see you soon. I hung up on Pete and moved away from the big front window so that I could hide in my room where I could look through a smaller window that he was less likely to see me in. All of our doors lock and are really heavy duty, so I felt pretty secure in my own room. I didn't turn on my bedroom lights but I crumpled once I locked the door. I sat there for a little bit trying to calm down my breathing. I heard my landlord watching a movie downstairs in his living room but I didn't get up until I heard the doorbell. The only way to reach the door to the downstairs suite was to walk down the stairs leading to the front door and then take the next set of stairs down. I was fucking determined to get my landlord, a way bigger guy than Pete, but I needed to get past our windowed front door first where Bill would be able to see me if I was at the door. At this moment I was pretty scared, and being scared makes me angry so I essentially said fuck it to myself and went down the stairs to the front door. I could see his head and the left half of his body through the window pane. He saw me trying to sneak past and called out, Hey baby, it's me Bill from the pizza shop. Pete sent me over with a free pizza for you. I immediately declined that offer right down the stairs to my landlord's door. I knocked and he groggily opened it up for me. I told him the situation, which basically went like, Dude, creepy fucking pizza guy followed me home and now he won't leave. My landlord is pretty much the coolest dude ever so he snaps awake and heads up to the front door. He uses his adult voice and tells Bill that he did not order pizza and that if he doesn't leave he's going to call the fucking cops. Bill doesn't say anything but we see him walk back to his car. He actually did have a pizza box but probably one meant for another order. My landlord was tired so it gave me a come get me immediately when crazy shit like this happens and then went to bed. I watched Bill in his car from the big window keeping my screen on and lid as bright as I could so that he could see that I had my phone ready to dial. He started up his shitbox and rolled down the road. I called Pete at the pizza place to tell him that my landlord handled it and that he didn't have to come over anymore. Pete waited for Bill to come back and then basically threatened the life of his Big Bill namesake if he ever came back to the pizza place or near me again. It's been almost two years since then 
and I've never heard from or about Bill since. Pardon my excessive use of the French language. Ugh.